Hello everyone. I am Casualty. In my latest video about Brand that told you all that I'd be playing Yasuo and making a video for Yasuo next. That day is today and we have a lot to get through it and I promised in the Brand video I'd be making Yasuo but if you want this series to continue please let me know by leaving a comment telling me what character from League of Legends you'd like to see and consider subscribing and liking the video if you enjoy this or you'll find me playing Yasuo in your ranked games. One more thing, something different I'll be doing in this video is using more gameplay in the background for most of the video with me popping in here and there. Let me know which format you prefer between do my face doing the talking head thing or more gameplay. But first up, we have to get to the lore and like we did last time, see if you guys can guess what class or classes we'll be choosing before we get done going over the lore, which will be summarized as best I can. Because he also has a longer backstory than Bran, but with that being said, before Yasuo was born, his mother was already widowed with a son named Yone in a region called Ionia, when his would-be father blew into her life and left just as quickly before the Ionian winter came. Yone, Yasuo's older brother, was everything Yasuo was not. Respectful, cautious, and conscientious, and the two were inseparable. Yone would often defend his brother when other children teased him. However, what Yasuo lacked in patience he made up for in determination, although some might call it stubbornness. When both were of age, Yone began his apprenticeship at a renowned sword school in the village. Yasuo followed waiting outside in the pouring rain until the teachers finally opened the gates to let the young man inside. Much to the annoyance of other students, Yasuo showed natural talent. Yasuo was the only student to catch the attention of Elder Suma, the last master of the legendary wind technique. At first, he refused the offer for Master Suma, however, his brother Yone helped change his mind. With the advice from Yone, Yasuo accepted a position as Suma's apprentice and personal bodyguard. Not long after the Noxians invaded Ionia, and Yasuo longed to add his sword to the cause, especially as his brother and classmates were called to fight. However, his duty was to defend the elders and Master Suma. The invasion escalated to war, and one rainy night, Yasuo heard the pounding of drums in the neighboring valley, foolishly believing he could turn the tide. He left his post, but he found no battle. Instead, he found a raw grave for hundreds of corpses, both Ionian and Noxian. He returned to school the next day only to be surrounded by other students, their swords drawn. Elder Suma was dead, and Yasuo found himself accused not only of dereliction, but of murder. He fought himself free and left the village now a fugitive Ionia. Yasuo knew he wasn't the one responsible and would spend much of his time defending himself from his former allies continually forced to fight or die. This was a road he was willing to take until he was tracked down by his brother Yone. Bound by honor they fought, although Yone was the better swordsman. Yasuo's wind magic overcame Yone's might, and with a single flash of steel, he cut his brother down. Yasuo would beg his older brother for forgiveness, but with his last dying breath, Yone would blame his brother Yasuo responsible because the wounds on the elder were from a wind technique which only he could have known, before falling silent and passing out before he could grant his brother any absolution. There is more to the story, but it's long and this amount of backstory suits our purposes. I summarized best I could, but the full biography is really good and it's a good read, so you should check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. That being said, I think we have enough here to get a backstory started. Obviously, for our background, since it makes a little sense, we'll be taking Outlander, which gives us the Wander feature, allowing us to recall the layout of terrain, sediments, and other features around us thanks to our excellent memory. In addition, you can also find food and water for yourself and five other people each day as long as the land offers some kind of wild game, water, berries, and other wild edibles. We also get to pick two skill proficiencies here, as well as a tool proficiency. Yasuo in the game plays the flute, so we're picking up our flute for our tool proficiency. But pick your favorites for the skill proficiency. I'm going to be taking nature and intimidation here. Next up, we'll be choosing our race, and we're going to be taking very human here. It's really hard to beat that free feat early on, and we're going to be taking advantage of it here and picking up the mobile feat, which makes sense so you can see also really gets around. The mobile feat gives you an increase to your speed by 10 feet when you use the dash action. Difficult terrain doesn't cost you extra movement on that turn. And finally, when you make a melee attack against a creature, you don't provoke opportunity attacks from that creature for the rest of the turn. And it does not matter if you hit or miss, and we also get a plus one, to two different ability scores, which we'll be going over now. For our ability scores, we're taking the point by method as usual, but if you roll your stats at the table, make sure you meet any multi classroom requirements needed for this build, and we will have a few for this one. We'll be taking an 8 to strength, a 15 to dexterity, a 12 to our constitution, a 14 to intelligence, a 13 to our wisdom, a 10 to charisma. For our racial score ability bonuses, we'll be putting one in wisdom and the other into dexterity, giving us a 16 dexterity and a 14 wisdom. Now for our starting class and our first level. I had many thoughts about what to start. But the best thing that fits was Fighter. Given that Yasuo was training before he became Master Suma's pupil, being first level fighters we get a D10 hit dice and we get a choice of fighting style options. We're going to be picking up Superior Technique, where we're going to be picking up Lunging Attack which adds 5 feet to our attack range and lets you roll with a D8 worth of damage per 1 rest. We also get a second Wind here, which allows us on our turn to use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1D10 plus your fighter level. Once you use this feature, you must finish a short or long rest to use it again. For your starting equipment, I would go the Gold Buy method and get your hands on a long 
sword and some leather or studded leather if possible. However, we'll be getting rid of it later on. And down the line, make sure you can secure a spell book if possible because you probably can't afford it right now early on. From there, we will be level 2. And we're going to stay with fighter class for a little bit longer. So at fighter level 2, we get action surge, which says on our turn we can take one additional action. Once you use this feature, you must finish a short or long rest before using it again. Moving to level 3, we are still mastering the blade and we will be fighter level 3, where we get our martial archetype or our subclass. Where we're going to be taking Samurai. Yasuo is more of a Ronin, but Ronin are just Samurai without a Master or Lord, so this fits with Samurai. We can use our bonus action on our turn to give ourselves an advantage on weapon attack rolls until the end of our current turn. When we do so, we also gain 5 temporary hit points. You can use this feature 3 times, and then you regain all uses of it when you finish a long rest. We also get to choose between learning our language or choosing between 3 Samurai skills. Take what you like, but I'll be picking the Samurai skill Persuasion here. At level 4, we'd be fire level 4, and here we get an ability score improvement. We're going to be bumping our dexterity up twice to an 18, giving us a plus 4 modifier. At level 5, we get the extra attack feature, meaning whenever we take the attack action, we can attack twice on our turn, meaning we can make two attacks with a longsword, then we can action surge and make another two attacks. At level 6, we get another ability score improvement, which we're going to be bumping our dexterity a final time to bring it up to a 20, giving us a plus 5 modifier, which is going to make our longsword hit like a train. At level 7, it is at this point that I think Yasuo will be learning from Master Suma and mastering the wind, so at this time we're going to be picking up some monk levels. At monk level 1, we get unarmored defense, so our AC is now a 15 naturally and we'll be raising this later. So if you got leather armor or studded leather armor, you no longer need it. And we also gain martial arts, where we can use dexterity instead of strength for unarmed and monk weapon attacks and damage rolls. We can also use a d4 in place of the normal unarmed strike damage, and this changes as we gain monk levels. And when we use the attack action, we can make an unarmed strike as a bonus action. So for example, on our turn, we can make two attacks with a longsword, use a bonus action to hit with an arm strike, and then we can action surge to make another two attacks with our longsword, giving us a potential of five hits in one turn, but it gets better. Because at level eight, we will be a monk level two, and we get key points, which we can spend in several ways. We can flurry blows by spending a key point and make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. We can spend one on patient defense, allowing us to take the dodge action as a bonus action instead. Or we can use Step of the Wind, spending one key point to disengage or dash as a bonus action, and our jump distance becomes doubled, but more than likely we'll probably be doing Flurry Blows. So our turn will look something like this. We would attack with our longsword twice, use a key point to use Flurry Blows, allowing us to make two unarmed strikes. Then we can use the Action Surge to make two more attacks, giving us a total of six potential strikes we can make in one turn. We can also gain Unarmored Defense here, giving us 10 feet of increased speed while we're not wearing armor or using a shield, so now we're sitting at a whopping 50 speed of movement. Now, I hear you saying that long swords aren't monk weapons, but not to fear, the optional class feature Dedicated Weapon Level 2 allows us to touch a weapon of our choice after a short or long rest and count that as a monk weapon as long as we have proficiency with it. It is a simple or martial weapon, and it must like the heavier special properties and it does. Ta-da! Monk Longsword. Carrying that momentum, we move on to level 9, where we be a monk level 3, where we get to flight missiles, meaning we can use a reaction when we're hit by a ranged weapon attack. When we do so, the damage we take from the attack is reduced by 1d10 plus our dexterity modifier, which is a 5 right now, plus our monk level, which is currently 3. If that roll reduces the damage to 0, you can catch the projectile slash missile, and you can then spit a key point to throw it back. It now counts as a monk weapon, and you have proficiency with it. We also get our monastic tradition, or our monk subclass. And we're taking the way of the four elements, which lets us choose two elemental disciplines. The first one we're taking is Unbroken Air, which lets us create a blast of compressed air. With our action, we spend two key points and choose a creature within 30 feet. The creature must then make a strength saving throw, and on a failed save, that creature takes 3d10 bludgeoning damage, plus an extra d10 for each additional key point you spend. And you can then push the creature up to 20 feet away from you and knock it prone. On a successful save, however, the creature isn't pushed or knocked prone and takes half damage. We also pick up Rush of Gale Spirits, which lets us spend two key points to cast Gusts of Wind. And we also get Key Fuel Attack here, which is another optional class feature, and says that when we speed a key point or more as part of our action, we can make one attack with an arm strike or our mark weapon as a bonus action. At level 10, we're a monk level 4, and here we get another ability score improvement, and we're going to be bumping our Wisdom here, bringing it up to a 16. And we also gain the Slow Fall feature, which lets our user reaction to reduce falling damage we take by amount equal to 5 times your monk level. Now let's take a quick look at what we currently got going for us at level 10. We have a movement speed of 50 feet, we have an armor class of 18 without armor, we have a plus 9 to our longsword to hit, we have a plus 5 to damage with that longsword, 
and we can make six attacks in one turn with four of them being longsword attacks and two being unarmed strikes. Um, be careful if you use flurry of blows to make the two attacks because you cannot use key fuel attack to attack with your longsword as it also counts as a bonus action to do so. We also can move away from whoever we attack in combat without taking an opportunity attack from them so we're pretty capable in combat and we gain most of our features back on a short rest. But it's about to get weirder. We're moving into level 11 and here we're going to be taking wizard spells. You know that spell book I told you to get 10 levels ago? It's gonna come into play now. At wizard level 1, you gain arcane recovery, letting you regain spell slots that have a combined level that is equal to or less than your wizard level rounded up, which is a nice bonus but we also get a few spells here. And as a rule of thumb, I'm gonna be focusing on wind-like spells for damage and other things to fit the theme of Yasuo. However, please pick up whatever you like here including other damaging options or whatever will help you in your party. But for our cantrips, I'll be grabbing gust and prestidigitation. The third option I will leave up to you. But for our first level spells, pick your favorites, but I will be grabbing Absorb Elements, Shield, and Expeditious Retreat. The Shield spell you could argue is the Wind Shield that Yasuo uses. The Shield spell gives you a plus 5 to your AC on reaction that you take when you're hit by an attack or magic missile. But the thing I didn't know is that that plus 5 AC lasts until the start of your next turn. Intelligence is your spell casting ability for your spells, which we currently have a plus 2 on, which isn't terrible. We're going to be riding this wizard train all the way to level 20, where we would be wizard level 10. Along the way, at level 2 we gain our subclass, our arcane tradition, and we're picking up blade singing. Now I heard our people about their groom that were not an elf, but with the release of Tasha's Cauldron of Everling, they retconned it and said that many different races are picking up this art now, besides elves, so you can put your pitchforks down. With that, the second level blade singing features training in war and song, which we gain proficiency with light armor, and a one-handed melee weapon of our choice, which we had, but we also gain proficiency with the performance skill for making those sweet flute solos in mid lane. And we also get Blade Song, which says, Provided you aren't wearing medium or heavy armor, or we're using a shield, which is cool since we're wearing no armor, you can use a bonus action to start the Blade Song, which lasts for 1 minute or 10 rounds of combat. It ends early if you are incapacitated, if you don medium or heavy armor, or shield, or if you use two hands to make a weapon attack. You can also dismiss the Blade Song at any time, but while your Blade Song is active, you gain the following benefits. You gain a bonus to your AC equal to your intelligence modifier, which for us would be a plus 2. So we would be at 20 AC without armor while we're blade singing. And your walking speed increases by 10 feet. You have advantage on acrobatics checks, and you gain a bonus to constitution saving throws that you make to maintain your concentration on spells. The bonus equals your intelligence modifier with a minimum of plus 1. You can use this feature several times, you go to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all uses of it when you finish a long rest. This is incredible for us, allowing us to dance around with our longsword and cause even more havoc. We now have a whopping 20 AC while we blade dance, and we have 60 feet of movement, and it's going to get better because at wizard level 4, we've gained the ability to score improvement, which we're going to be using to increase our wisdom up to 18, giving us a plus 4 modifier, meaning we now have a 21 AC while blade singing. At wizard level 5, we gain access to alert level spells. However, none here are really fit the theme of Yasuo besides Gust of Wind. However, we can already cast it from our monk levels, so pick your favorites here. At 6th level, you gain extra attack, but other instances of extra attack features do not stack, so you can only make 4 attacks in turn, plus 2 more if you flurry blows. At wizard level 8, we gain another ability score improvement, and we're bumping our wisdom again to cap it off at 20 giving us a plus 5 modifier and making it so we now have a 22 AC while we're blade singing. And at level 10, finally, we gain Song of Defense, which allows us to use our reaction and expend one spell slot to reduce the damage done to us by an equal amount to 5 times the spell slot level you used. And throughout all of this, we have gained access to 4th and 5th level spells. Here, I'm going to pick up Control Winds, which is more of a flavor spell for the character than anything else, but we also get Steel Wind Strike, where we flourish our blade and then vanish the strike like the wind. We choose up to 5 creatures we can see in a 30 foot range and make a melee spell attack against each target. On a hit, the target takes 6d10 force damage, and you can then teleport to an unoccupied space you can see within 5 feet of one of those targets. It doesn't matter if you hit or miss that chosen target you teleport to. This has the potential to do 30d10 in one turn, plus you can then use action surge to make two more weapon attacks to the target you just teleported to and then use a bonus action to flurry of blows and make two more unarmed strikes at that target adding up for a total of 30d10 plus 2d8 plus 2d4 plus 20 and the 20 is coming from our plus 5 modifiers on our weapon and our arm strike since we attack four times giving you a possible max damage of 344 damage that's if you roll max damage obviously but we'll play it safe and just say half of that which is still 172 damage which is not bad and now that we're level 20 how do i feel about this build it's very strong you have a 22 ac which is good for someone that can move in and out of combat 
as much as you can, all the while wearing no armor, possessing 60 feet of movement while blade singing. However, we can't really hear ourselves besides our second wind feature. We're also a bit easy to hit early on, but we can dish out that pain just as hard as we take it. And we get a majority of our features back on a short rest, allowing us to do what Yasuo does best. Hit your 10 death power spec and carry the team, right? I'm sure the healing member of your party will be a set when you try to 1v5 some mind flares. Regardless, have fun with the build and have a good day everybody.